Radhe Radhe everybody, how are you all? We have a huge backlog situation. I wasn't able to update my scripture writing which I am going to do now with all of you. How have you been? Um, is your study going well? I hope you all had a wonderful week. We are going to proceed with first chapter, ninth verse. Here. <clears throat> decorative pen I use to write the numbers. <clears throat> and Duryodhana continues to say, and many other heroes besides armed with many weapons each well skilled in battle <coughs> and all resolved to lay down their lives <clears throat> to serve my cause. Okay. So wars are generally won for the nation. Right? In this case, this whole foundation of this war was for Duryodhan, was to exert his power and take what is what is not his. So he clearly says it's my cause and, and there, there goes that mine again. So no one has subscribed to the idea that what he's doing it right. But because he is the king, they have to be there. They're all there. That was the time, uh, you know, where everybody knew that he was wrong and nobody could do anything. That's, that's the case. But this army of ours protected by Bhishma is inadequate. And that army of theirs protected by Bhima is adequate. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now he says that his his army is protected by Bhishma. Now, this is why I wanted us to do a character study who's who and of Mahabharat to gain a good understanding of this chapter. Bhishma is someone that has a boon that he can die when he wants to. So he's completely uh, invincible. No one can ever defeat him. He has been... Um, uh, you know, a dharmic person his entire life. And, uh, you know, he has Bhishma on his side. Now, he, he shouldn't be feeling this insecure. He co he compares that army with that of uh, Bhima. Bhima is um, one of the pa Pandavas that he's fighting, the five brothers, Dharma, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula and Sahadeva. And Bhima, um, being on the other side, he says that army is adequate. Why does he feel this way? Because of the um, 
incorrect or adharmic principle that lies within this fight he knows for a fact that he is not right and that fear is gnawing at him and he is expressing that saying uh, Bhishma's protection here we have but it's still inadequate Bhima and size wise um, Pandava's army was way smaller than what Duryodhana had so he must be feeling extremely confident but he doesn't because he made innumerable attempts to um, kill the Pandavas, you know, trick them, subject them to various tortures. And I'm just decorating the page with some decorative tape. Um, various tortures and nothing has ever happened to them. Whatever he wishes doesn't happen. This is why he thinks there's something that they have that I don't have. What is that? What is that? That is the path of dharma. He doesn't have dharma and that is exactly why he keeps on fading. Now let's go to the 11th verse. Let's divide the page. Now, take your proper places. In front of your martial troops. And protect Bhishma alone. So now he thinks the only invaluable thing he has here is Bhishma who has the boon of dying whenever he wants to. So the, you know, his idea is just to protect him so that he'd be victorious because he's pretty much um, not defeatable. 12th verse, Bhishma, the grandsire. You can see that um, it is his grandfather, right? Great grandfather, I think. So he is the grandsire and he is like the most eldest person in that side of his family. And look at his tone. Okay, do protect Bhishma alone. The, why he does this is not because of anything except that he thinks Bhishma is one of those pawns in his game, which is very important to be protected. Of course, in politics, it's like that. But with Duryodhan, everything has been this way when you read the Bharata, that everything comes with a Priyojana. What, what do I get from this? What do they have? This is all his... That's why he had to live not a peaceful life. Even though he was in the palace all the time, he didn't go to the forest, he didn't face any struggles. But Pandavas were always joyful in spite of all the struggles. And Duryodhana left pretty miserable life. And this is because of this. Bhishma, the grandsire, the courageous, the oldest of Kurus, gave forth a lion roar. And blew his corn. Causing joy to Duryodhana. So we have completed until what's to be done for today. And we are going to mark off. I have a lot to finish uh, in the Sanskrit verses. I'm enjoying this process of doing that. Um, it gives me great joy to write Sanskrit. Okay, now. 9 is done, 10 is done, 11 is done and 12 is done.
okay so today's scripture writing session is done hope you're all writing the scripture hope you're all reading the scripture hope you're all studying the scripture hope you're contemplating the scripture and until we meet next time happy studying radhe radhe